സഹനാവതു സഹനൗപുനത്തു സഹവീര്യം കരവാവഹൈ തേജസ്വിനാവതി തമസ്തു മാ വിദ്വിഷാവഹൈ ഓം ശാന്തി 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 ഹരിയോം ഓം നമോ നാരായണ പ്രണാം സ്വാമിജി ഹാർട്ടി വെൽക്കം ടു എവറി വൺ ഇൻ അവർ ഗ്രൂപ്പ് ദിസ് ഇസ് അവർ തേർഡ് ക്ലാസ് ഓഫ് തത്വബോധ ഇൻ ദ ഫസ്റ്റ് ക്ലാസ് സ്വാമിജി ഹൈലൈറ്റഡ് അബൌട്ട് ദി പർപ്പസ് ഓഫ് ഹ്യൂമൻ ലൈഫ് ദ പർപ്പസ് ഓഫ് ഹ്യൂമൻ ലൈഫ് ഈസ് ഹാപ്പിനെസ് കംപ്ലീറ്റ് ഹാപ്പിനെസ് ഹാപ്പിനെസ് ഈസ് അവർ നേച്ചർ ബട്ട് വി ഡോ നോ ദാറ്റ് സോ വി ഗോ ആഫ്റ്റർ മെറ്റീരിയൽ ഓബ്ജെക്ട്സ് ഔട്ട്സൈഡ് ടു ടേക്ക് ഹെൽപ്പേഴ്സ് ടു അറ്റൈൻ ദിസ് അവർ സുപ്രീം ഗോൾ വി ഹാവ് ടു സ്റ്റഡി ശാസ്ത്രാസ് ഇൻ ദ സെക്കൻഡ് ക്ലാസ് സ്വാമിജി എക്സ്പ്ലെയിൻ ദി ട്രഡീഷണൽ അപ്രോച്ച് ടു ദ ശാസ്ത്ര സ്റ്റഡീസ് ആൻഡ് ദ ഇമ്പോർട്ടൻസ് ഓഫ് ചാന്തിങ് മംഗള ശ്ലോക്കാസ് and chanting mangala shlokas shed our ego ego means ahankaram our ahankaram ahankaram means ego swami ji chanted three shlokas and explain the the first shloka starting from shruti smriti purana alayam here the shloka says we salute that bhagavad pada who is the embodiment of knowledge shruti smriti purana na alayam alayam means storehouse the storehouse of shruti smriti puranam swami ji talk about all these subjects there only then in the second line it says salute to that bhagavad pada who is karunalayam karuna means compassion so the abode of compassion and in the last line it says shankaram loka shankaram shankaram means auspiciousness so he is the abode of auspiciousness mangalam means he makes the whole humanity happy and in the second shloka it says we salute again and again sri bhag shankara who is the bhashyakara because he has written bhashyam for prasthanatrayam what is prasthanatrayam we will discuss later and he is also the incarnation of lord shiva lord shiva is lord shankara then afterwards we also salute Badarayana Badarayana is Vedavyasa Maharshi who is the sutrakara he wrote brahma sutra and he is the incarnation of mahavishnu in the third shloka we salute to dakshina murti who is the dakshina murti he is the adi guru he is shiva himself and now we see he is the formless all pervading principle which in form he manifests as ishwara guru atma there is no difference between ishwara guru atma he is all sri dakshina murti only the tattva is only one but in form there are three and swami ji each word in the class is very very valuable and we all have to hear it again and again and make this knowledge our knowledge then only we can understand the, what swami ji says very clearly then as usual this class is for one hour later half an hour for question answer and we are going to stick to the time so any questions come after that 
you can put it in the study group unfortunately there is some delay in the tech, uh, in the making the group because of the technical problem please bear with us and swami ji will answer the questions leisurely and we will now listen to swami ji's class are you श्रुति स्मृति पुराणल करुणल नमा भगवत्द शंकर लोकशंक शंकर शंकराचार्य केशव बाधरायण सूत्रभाष्य वंदे भगवन पुनः ईश्वरो गुरुरात्मे मूर्ति भेद विभागिने व्योमेहाय दक्षिणामूर्त नम श्री दक्षिणामूर्त नम श्री गुरुभ्यो नम हरि ओं वेलकम टू ऑल द लिस्नर्स फॉर द थर्ड सेशन ऑफ tattvabodha in the last session we have learned the famous invocation shlokas of shankaracharya who is the author of this particular text as well as our advaita vedanta prasthanatraya and all other test books so first uh, we salute our great great acharya bhagavat pada shankara acharya now we are learning this tattva bodha the terminologies of vedanta the definitions of vedanta is a primary test book of vedanta we all know that and it comes under the category of prakaranas the topical test books of vedanta or we can say the primary test books of vedanta it's called prakaranas now why this prakarana why are here why we are here to study this regarding that we discussed about our ultimate aim of the life purpose of the life now there are so many other subject related to our life why we study vedanta so the vedanta is the essence of vedas which came through our rishis the seers of veda by their compassion they have given to the mankind the ultimate knowledge of veda so the knowledge we got from vedas is the uh we can say something 
very fundamental, very special for the mankind. Therefore, obviously, this the subject what we are going to discuss here is very much needed for us. We are going to learn what we are, the nature of, the essential nature of our own existence. So we don't know who are we. We are unable to recognize it or we are in a state of ignorance where we are unable to discriminate our own existence. Vedanta is addressing that. So Vedanta is helping us to know our own self, our own existence. When Vedanta says, you are all pervading Brahman, you are nothing but Brahman itself. It means there is no conditions. There's no subject object relation. No duality. It's beyond all the perception and conditions. Unfortunately, we have no other choice but to learn Vedanta. We are unable to learn this from our studies. So that is something uh, very unfortunate. We are missing our own, uh, our own knowledge or our own identity. We wrongly identify ourselves with the body and mind. The functions of body and mind we consider our own functions, our own activities. So when I think by my mind, I think I am thinking, I have this desire, I have to fulfill. So this sort of uh, uh, misidentification or wrong identification with the elements which help us to uh, know the truth, we misidentify it with that. So therefore, Vedanta is uh, dealing with these problems, the fundamental problems of life. We are in a fear of death. There is no end. We want all kinds of freedom. Now, people are fighting for freedom. When somebody says there is a bondage, then we are afraid. We don't want bondage. We don't want any kind of uh, you know, uh, problems which comes, comes across our own entity. We want to eliminate all those problems. This is only possible when we really identify our own existence, our own reality. That is what Vedanta talk about. Vedanta is based on Upanishads. In other words, we can say 
Upanishads are the last part and the essence of Vedanta. It, uh, it deals with these problems, the fundamental problems uh, of this mankind. So here we want to know ourselves. That is the only aim of learning this. Why we should remember this again and again. When we learn any book, we read any book, we never think about ourselves. We think about the object, the subject discussed in that book. Because that is the way we learn in our schools. That is the way our education goes. Therefore, now we are studying this Tattva Bodha. It's not just to uh, get some information, some knowledge of a textbook. Not at all. We are learning this to identify ourselves. This is the learning of self. So this we have to remember. This is the ultimate object of this learning. So the last session, we learned three shlokas, three verses praising a great, great Acharya Bhagavad Pada. We have not yet entered the main test. So today we will learn the first sloka of the Tattva Bodha, the invocation sloka that Shankarajaraji himself writes, identifying Guru and the Supreme Consciousness, the Lord Vasudeva. So he is praising with the same words both the Guru and the Ishwara. So very beautiful and very uh, no, energetic sloka. When we uh, chant any sloka, especially invocation slokas, we have to bring some emotion to our mind. As I said, I'm repeating it. We are learning ourselves. It means we are learning about our own self. So this uh, emotional feeling should be there. I think we can uh, pronounce, chant the first sloka like the previous uh, classes. I will uh, just chant part by part so you can repeat. If the new students are there, new listeners are there, they can follow. Uh, the problem is I can hear you, uh, therefore uh, I will just wait a few seconds and then repeat the second part. Vasudevendra Yogendram Natwa jnana pradam gurum. Natwa jnana pradam gurum. 
The first sloga we chanted, you can learn this uh, chanting after the class also. We have one week time. So before next uh, session, we can learn this sloka and memorize it. Because when we learn the basic textbook of any philosophy, we say darshana shastras. We learn by heart. The first book of Vedanta that we can say this is Tattvabodha is the first book of Vedanta. Uh, as I mentioned, we should uh, learn this thoroughly and if possible, memorize it. So memorizing the shlokas and the verses <coughs> is a good exercise for uh, no, repeating it is good exercise for intellectual development. No, you, you can remember anything if you practice this memorizing shlokas. So we have learned in our schools many uh, this is many, many textbooks, many uh, essays, formulas, and so many things. But uh, that is different because there is no spirituality connected. The, only the intellectual uh, connection is there. It is intellectual exercise. But this is, as I said, it's a connected to self so we are learning something, uh, something more profound, more depth, which will lead us to liberation. So therefore, it's a good exercise, good practice to chant by heart. So we see word by word meaning. Vasudevendra Yogindram Natva Jnana Pradam Gurum Vasudevendra Yogindram is naming Vasudeva as Yogindra. Vasudeva we know famous name. Krishna's name is Vasudeva because Krishna was son of Vasudeva. Krishna's father's name was Vasudeva. Therefore, uh, Krishna become Vasudeva. This is very interesting in Sanskrit. If you learn Sanskrit, you will learn this technique. In olden days, they uh, give the name or oh, the son connected with father or grandfather or great grandfather. If great grandfather is alive, when the uh, son is born, then the name uh, would be connected with the great grandfather. Like that, if the grandfather is there, he, uh, his name will come. So there are rules how to make this new name. So this is uh, just to give the respect and also identity. Now we make uh, identity cards like Aadhaar and all other cards. Uh, so uh, we write our father's and mother's name. Uh, in some countries they write mother's name and in India and other countries, we write father's name first. So both the names will be there. And similarly, uh, 
in uh, Vedic tradition, they used to uh, connect mother's name also. Because in Vrihadharanik Upanishad, the last part of Vrihadharanik Upanishad, there are so many names uh, described that uh, mother's names, connected to mother's name. So this is uh, here, Vasudeva, the Lord Krishna, the famous Lord Krishna, Vasudeva. Now, Vasudeva, here it is, Yogindra is uh, the king of yogis, the master of yogis. Why, when we see in Bhagavad Gita, Bhagavad Gita also says, Bhagavad Gita su, Upanishad su, Yoga Shastre. So Bhagavad Gita is also Yoga Shastra. Why it is called Yoga Shastra? Here the word yoga means sadhana. All kinds of spiritual sadhana. So generally we call yoga. It's a practice. Very serious practice. Intensive practice. So Bhagavad Gita su Upanishad to Yoga Shastra. And in Bhagavad Gita, Vasudeva Krishna is Yogeshwara, Etra Yogeshwara Krishna. So his uh, adjective, he is praised as Yogeshwara, the Lord of all yogas. Yoganam Ishwaraha. So there are so many types of uh, practices, sadhanas in Bhagavad Gita. We know all karma yoga, bhakti yoga, and all that. So he is a master of all those. Therefore, he could, uh, he could give us a beautiful test as Bhagavad Gita. So here, Shankaracharya praised Lord Vasudevendra Yogindram, Jnana Pradam Gurum. He is the bestower of knowledge. He teaches us the knowledge, the supreme knowledge with all its sadhanas and uh, uh, practices, regulations, rules and regulations. So, jnana pradam gurum, jnanam pradadati iti jnana pradha. One who gives knowledge he is called jnana pradha. If we say knowledge giver, that is the correct word for jnana prada. But uh, in English, uh, we don't say that's a knowledge giver and food giver like that. But in Sanskrit, we can make compounds of such words. So it is easy to learn. And jnana prada, whoever gives knowledge, as we discussed in last session, the greatness of Guru, the importance of Guru. So he is Guru himself. Now here in this contest, Vasudeva Krishna as Yogindra, the master of all yogis and the giver of knowledge as Guru. And he says, Natva. I salute Natva, having saluted. So after that, first I salute the Lord Vasudeva. Then the next, what he is going to do. Now here, uh, one thing we have to discuss is, here Shankaracharya takes Guru and Ishwara both together. So Guru Paramatmanur Abheta Ishwaro Guru Ratme Di Murti Bheda Vibhagine. So we have learned this. 
the same thing is repeated here. So he's indicating that I am going to uh, give you the knowledge of Advaita. So the Guru and Ishwara is one and the same. Not only Guru and Ishwara, but also the self, the one and same. So he indicates one at that point. Another thing is, one of Vasudeva Krishna's name is Govinda. And Shankaracharya's Guru's name is also Govinda. So if we, we take that, the Vasudeva and Govinda, they are synonymous. The another name of Vasudeva is Govinda. So in Sanskrit, for one person or for one thing, we have so many names. Like for sun, Surya. In English, only one name as sun. But in Sanskrit, if you see Surya, Aditya, Savita, mm -hmm. Revi, Pusha, so many names, Divakaraha. So we can use whatever we want, where, uh, what we want to communicate, whichever way, because each name has different meaning. So similarly, here uh, Shankaracharya uses that technique of identifying Guru and Ishwara. So here he is saluting his guru, Govinda Bhagavat Acharya, and Vasudeva, the Parama Acharya of our tradition. Because our tradition starts from Narayanam Patma Bhavam Vashishta. So this way, having saluted with all respect, he says, Umukchunam hidarthaya tattva bodhu abhidiyate. This is a statement is expressing his wish to write the book, write this topic for Mumukchus, only for Mumukchus. Whoever wants Liberation. The seekers of liberation is called mumukchu. Moksham ichati iti mumukchu. Who wants to liberate himself or attain moksha liberation? So for them, for their use, I am writing this. So, mumukchunam hidarthaya. Because I want to help our mumukchus. Therefore, I am writing. Hita means benefit. There's something helpful. That is called hita. So, what is helpful here? If we get the knowledge of Tattvabodha, we can practice that and get liberated from this bondage of sorrow, the samsara. So that is very special, very, very special. As we have uh, learned in the first session, our ultimate purpose will be fulfilled by learning this. We go towards ourselves. We experience our own existence as all pervading. We experience our own consciousness as existing everywhere. In and out. And we 
experience the ultimate bliss, the eternal happiness. So if someone wants this, he is eligible for the study of this Vedanta. Otherwise, no, because I directly say here, if somebody thinks after learning this Vedanta, my all family problems will be solved. Or I can uh, uh, no, live without uh, doing any work. So I will get full happiness then why I go for work? So I can be get rid of all the problems of life. No disease, uh, no uh, other problems. No. Vedanta will not help you for those. If after learning Vedanta, if something happens, something good happens in your life, that is a side effect or a byproduct of that learning. This we have to remember because nowadays people think if we learn Vedanta or such uh, uh, scriptures, we can free our problems. We can solve our problems. But that is not true. By learning Vedanta, you will get the knowledge or the experience of the self, yourself. So knowing that if something happens in your life, then that is the effect of that. So we are, whatever we are doing is without our own knowledge, without our self-knowledge. So we learn the objective knowledge. So this is the speciality of Veda. Therefore, Hidarthaya, here it says the benefit when we uh, uh, no, hear that benefit is there, some benefit. So what benefit here? The benefit is self-knowledge. So by that, definitely we can solve the problems will be solved. As I said, as the by effect of that, not the direct effect, the byproduct of that. Uh, because Vedanta is dealing with, with uh, many of our greatest uh, uh, mysteries of the creation and the life. The mysteries we are unable to understand. Why we are afraid always? We are afraid of death. We have no answer. What is the reason? We know what is death is. Then why we are afraid? Why we want always freedom? Why people are, the whole world is talking about freedom, freedom, freedom. We want uh, all kinds of freedom. So, these are the mysteries in our life we cannot we, we, why we don't we cannot answer we want freedom we want happiness so these are solved by vedanta this is the uh, object of vedanta so that is the hitam here the ultimate uh, we can say the ultimate uh, object ultimate purpose. So that for that mukchu nam hidarthaya tattva bodho abhidiyate tattva bodha being expounded I am writing on tattva bodha tattva bodha means tattvanam bodha the one meaning there are so many uh, tattvas 
so, so many subject to know. I am uh, discussing on those subject related to Vedanta. That is understood. Or in other words, we can say Tattva is only one Brahman, Atma. So I will uh, teach you what is Brahman is. The characteristics of Brahman. The nature of Brahman. So that is Tattva. The literary meaning of Tattva is the thing itself. As it is, the object as it is, whatever we say, if we talk about a cloth, the piece of cloth, now if we want to define what is cloth, it's very difficult because cloth is a name given to a particular piece of no, cotton uh, and made, made in a such a way or uh, polyester or whatever. So that particular piece of cloth is called cloth. That is all we can say. But uh, according to the philosophy or the system of learning, the cloth, the definition of cloth should be threads because that is the tattvam there. When we try to know what is cloth is, we will get only threads there, length and breadth. And then when we think about what is thread, the cotton, then we get the answer the particle of that, that is cotton. And it is made about, if made uh, from cotton, then it is cotton, it is polyester, that is, that is the tattvam there. So, then ultimately, we reach that this object, which is called cloth, is the particles of cotton. Then, the normal tattva bodha, normal uh, process of knowing or inquiry stops there. We are satisfied with that. But if you want to go beyond that, you want to know uh, actually this cloth is made of what? Then again, we have to learn more. We have to learn how this cotton is produced and the atoms and all other things, the seed of the cotton and how it is produced and everything. It goes to another subject. So we have to learn that subject specially. Then only we will get the right answer that this is this, this cloth is this. So this uh, process is called Tattva Bodha. I think you might have understood what we are going to learn. So if you uh, just imagine whatever you see in front of you in this beautiful creation, if you take each object and think about that, contemplate on that, what it is made of, made of, what is the cause of that, then you will get step by step answer. The object will be divided. And you will enter into that object. And you will find the answer. If you have learned uh, biology or physics, so you will think through that. 
chemistry, you will think through that. If you know uh, cell biology, you will, you will think through that. Atomic theory, you will think that. So this way, we will go uh, very, very far of that object. Ultimately, that object will disappear and the origin of that object, the tattvam of the reality of that object will come to your mind. This is what Vedanta talk about. Therefore, you can learn Vedanta or the Vedantic contemplation can be with any object, whatever in this creation. It is not only through a uh, no, spiritual subject, no. Vedanta in that level, no differentiation of spirituality and worldly, you know, the material life and like that. Life is one and the same. The one life and one reality. We separate just to learn that for the sake of learning. In order to uh, understand deeply, we separate subjects. Actually, one subject, that subject is ourself, nothing else. So this is the end of Vedanta. So therefore, this Tattvabodha is leading us to that level, the ultimate experience of our self, the Supreme Consciousness. So, Tattva Bodho Abhidhiyate. So, his uh, uh, Sankaracharya Ji is very kind to us. He is teaching us the theory of Vedanta with very, very you know, light, very direct, with the direct and very simple words. So that we will learn next session. Here, uh, uh, just I want to convey a couple of points. Uh, regarding this test book, there is uh, a discussion that this test book is not written by Adi Purushankaracharya because I am again and again saying this is the work of Sankaracharya, Sankaracharya. So you, if you heard something like that, you may have a doubt. So some say this is. Uh, it came, this test book came after him. And some, some Acharya of uh, Shankara tradition, Adi Shankara tradition wrote this. We don't mind if uh, some other Acharya wrote this book because in our tradition, we don't see who wrote it is not very important for us. But the important is what he wrote. We respect the subject discussed in the textbook. Is the subject is following the Vedic tradition? Is this subject is uh, useful, and beneficial for the people, if this subject is uh, giving us the 
real fruit then we take that book and learn shankaracharya ji also wrote many books nowhere he has mentioned his name he authored at least 160 uh, three or four books but there is no authorization he has not named that i am writing this only by his style of uh, teaching his uh, vocabulary his style of sentence making his uh, his thought process we take that as his work as per the story of his life we know he wrote many test book because that was his mission so that is what we learned here and the second thing is now here shankaracharya takes the name of vasudeva people may think why he is taking only vasudeva's name why not shiva why not devi why not uh, kartikeya why not ganesha so what what is the reason is he is a bhakta a devotee of vasudeva therefore he is taking his name because many believe shankaracharya is connected to the tradition of shaivas sada shiva samarambham shankaracharya madhyama there is one famous shloka so regarding that i say it is uh, it is right that uh, we should admit that acharya ji takes the name of narayana vasudeva in his bhashyas also he takes the name of vasudeva nowhere in the bhashya we found shiva's name as he is respecting or uh, for invocation or any other no connection with shiva ni we can't find that but bhagavan narayana bhagavan narayana he says many places that is because uh, as per the story his uh, family deity we say kula devam kula devata the kula devata was narayana and the other uh, as per the tradition is from narayana parampara so we all the sanyasins of shankaracharya tradition are initiated into narayana parampara that is what we say so our uh, mantra is om namo narayanaya so because we are initiated into narayana parampara that is what uh we know from this i think that is the reason uh because the shishya or any uh, uh parampara when we follow when we follow the tradition we have to follow the traditional uh no uh, rules or the system of that tradition if i am a shiva bhakta i am if i am a shiva bhakta Uh, but uh, when i follow the tradition i say om namo narayana there are so many shiva bhaktas so many devi bhaktas all the sanyasins they say om namo narayana ya so the narayana namaskaram but the namaskaram we do is also narayana namaskaram so therefore uh, ajar ji is following that and we are abram uh, in his uh, tradition we are also following that is not that uh, 
uh, he's uh, not admiring, adoring Bhagavan Shiva. Shiva is also there. Devi is also there. All the deities, because he started the system of Pancha Devata, Pancha Ayatana Puja, worshipping all the five deities. So this point I want to uh, inform you uh, because when further we study, uh, I may repeat this again. Uh, you may have why uh, I'm saying this. So I just want to clear that point. So we stop here with this uh, first invocation and by next class, we will start the test starting the to learn the Vedanta terminologies. Hari Om. Now over to you for asking questions. Hari Om. So whoever wants to ask question, please unmute yourself and ask the question. It sound is okay. See, it is a little disturbed, Swamji, today. Uh -huh. Okay. Even afternoon session. Because some was... net problem is there. Today, no, our net connection is not constant. So some net, net problem is there. That, that is also one reason. Since morning, there is there were so many problems. We could not uh, upload our video and all those. Okay. So sorry for that. No, but we could manage it. We could hear it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so Arun Babu, Naya want to ask a question. Uh, please. Please yeah. unmute. Hari Om Swamiji. Uh, Hari Om. My question is uh, just related to the point what you just now mentioned about the Kula Devata. Uh. So from the Shankaracharya's philosophy is concerned as a Advaita philosophy. Uh, yes. What is the relevance of the lineage, lineage of the Kulam or the Kula Devata? And uh, if it is specific to a particular group, then my uh, secondary question associated to that is, how do I know what is my Kula Devata? How, how I connect? How, what is the method of knowing my Kula Devam? If there is a connection to that. Uh. Yeah, it is very interesting question. Actually, this Kula Devada system, like uh, all of you have a family doctor, no? You have a family doctor? <laughs> yeah. So, uh, now, if somebody asks, what is the need of a family doctor? Because there are so many doctors, uh, anytime any, we can approach anybody. But usually, uh, most, of, uh, most of the families, they have a family doctor. Uh, since uh, you know, centuries it started, because we have heard many stories about uh, uh, Raja Kula Vaidyas. We have Kula Vaidya. Kula means family, Vaidya means doctor. So all the, the kingdoms, they had Kula Vaidyas. And uh, similarly, even uh, small families, they also had. Why we need to have a uh, family doctor is, as per my understanding. Because if family doctor is there, that doctor knows the special kinds of, you no, know, what you say, the diseases connected to that family and what uh, type of medicine is suitable for that family members. Because each uh, uh, person is connected to a family as we know the DNA and all other uh, are connect, uh, there are so many reasons. For each body, it is different. But uh, to generalize that, 
इफ वी टेक ए फैमिली फैमिली में हैव सम हेरिटरी प्रॉब्लम्स और सम अदर प्रॉब्लम्स सो इफ द डॉक्टर नोज दैट अकॉर्डिंगली ही कैन ट्रीट सो द ट्रीटमेंट कैन बी ईजी and more effective and timingly effective same way if we want to pray to a uh, yeah, god or uh, deity we want to do uh, we want to worship then it if if we connect ourselves with the family deity our mind because our mind and our the our, our uh, tradition father and uh, our fathers they are doing so it is already there in our mind in that level the subconscious level so it is uh, a spiritual connection as when we say about the uh, medicine it is physical as some but it is connected to uh, mind also the mental and physical but this is spiritual that spirit has come some connection with the family or the deity residing or connected to family therefore in our tradition before giving any other initiation the guru ask the person who came for initiation interested to take initiation ask his uh, what is your kula devata which is your kula devata what type of tradition you are from so if guru knows that it is easy for him to give a special initiation connected to that kula devata this is a uh, this is a science you can say it is all connected to uh, our psychology our uh, no subconscious mind it is all connected so therefore uh, normally we start from that kula devata and now your second question is how you know what is your kula devata practically it is uh, very difficult if you are not aware about that today you have to ask your uh, father uh, parents if they don't know if you are grandfather if they are alive you can ask them if they are not there you can ask the village where you uh, you are belonging to or your uh, uh the village from where the family came so you can go to the that area that village and ask because there somebody will know your family was connected to this uh there are so many interesting stories uh is it happened to my life also so there uh, it is possible we can find out and uh, sometimes uh, most of uh, the kula devata especially in kerala when we say there are uh, so many temples the connected temples like no the mother temple one one temple is mother temple and from there the other deities are connected so uh, if you take an example just to illustrate that like uh, kodungallur kodungallur uh, devi we have a famous temple in kerala so that temple is a mother of many kula devatas because from that temple uh, uh, the kula devatas are uh, gone to many villages almost uh, all south kerala and uh, you know, north kerala and there are so many temples connected to that so like that we have to find out because the oldest temples uh in kerala as per the 
history. Uh, one is uh, Kodungalur and another is Tirumandhankun. Tirumandhankun in Malapuram, uh, near Peridalmanna. So these are the oldest temples. So uh, the other temples, other devadas are connected like that. It is very interesting subject, uh, not to uh, know in the, regarding this. So if uh, we can learn that, how to find out that. Okay. The next person is Rajani V. Rajani V, please. Rajani V is not there. Uh, yes, I'm here. Hari Om Swamiji. I'm so sorry. I couldn't unmute myself. Uh, uh, Hari Om. Hari Om. Hari Om. Yeah, you're welcome to ask. Uh, Swamiji, uh, you talked about uh, wrongly identifying with the body. Uh, yeah, so, um, uh, what I have heard is that Atma is in the Sakshi Bhav always, and mm. the body is made up of the elements, the body, mind, intellect, uh, yeah. and is, uh, Prakriti, and it is inert. Mm. So then, how does that connection come, and who is wrongly identifying, and who is thinking I am the body, and who is thinking I am liberated? Correct. This, uh, you will get uh, the elaborated answer once you study Tattva Bodha, but uh, I can answer in one sentence. The reflected consciousness, now I am using a technical term. The reflected consciousness is the knower, is the identifier, is the reliever. So now, what is the reflected consciousness? The mind, in mind, the consciousness is reflected as the sunlight is reflected in the mirror. The all-pervading consciousness reflect, reflected in a particular set of thoughts that is called mind. And now that mind work as consciousness, as conscious uh, being, then that consciousness is connected to body and uh, or other elements. So this is the uh, process, this is the formula, what we say. So this we can experience, this is uh, not beyond our experience. Daily we have this experience. When we go to sleep, we experience this reflected consciousness there. Because this gross body, the physical body is lying on the bed and sleeping. It is taking rest. Now the mind works there. So this you will learn elaborately uh, with uh, all logic and experiences later. So in one word, we can say reflected consciousness is the knower and uh, no, is the, that identifier, everything. Yes, ne next, next question. question is Asha Menon. Hmm. Asha Menon, you can ask the question. Namaskaram uh, Swamiji. Uh, I Namaste. want to know. Uh, uh, I want to suppose, suppose a girl belongs to a certain uh, Kula Devada and the boy mm. belongs to another Kula Devada. When they mm. get married, which Devata or Dev the girl has to follow? Second, when they have mm. a child, which mm. uh, Kula Devada child has to follow? That is one question. And second mm. one is I want to know you mentioned about five Devatas. Who are the five, five Devatas? Okay. Uh, you see, uh, no, we are talking about Vedanta. So these subjects are <laughs> very uh, uh, practical. It means uh, these subjects are connected to uh, our uh, present life. Therefore, uh, whenever you get something like this, you always think, you identify with that. Oh, this is uh, something uh, I want to know. 
there are so many uh, queries about this. Now, uh, if I talk about that as per the system, but uh, once you ask this, uh, you can um, no, learn that how it happens. Now, uh, regarding marriage, so now what marriage, uh, the, how the practice of marriage is uh, totally different from the real system of our marriage. Because now uh, people know each other and then this just they decide to uh, live together. That is one side. If that marriage is arranged marriage, then also they won't see all this background and you know, the Kula Devata and why, you know, nothing. They see only uh, the status, status of the uh, family and uh, you know, uh, then what type of uh, job he has, how, how or she uh, earns and what education. Uh, no, this is only, this is matter. This is the uh, connection of uh, thing there now for the marriage. Therefore, uh, regarding this uh, uh, family and all those are not coming into picture. But since you ask this, I can say what happened. Uh, as per the tradition, uh, before marriage, now the kanya, what we call the, the kanyas, kanya dhanam. So before marriage, there is a ritual of Kuladevata Puja. You might have seen this in uh, uh, Ramayanam or Mahabharatam or Bhagavata stories. So before marriage, the Kanya goes to the Kuladevata and there they do a special kind of puja. And according to the uh, Jodisham, seeing Jodisham and timing everything, and they ask, ask permission from that Kuladevata to uh, go to the next family, the, to other family as a wife or no, to other family. So this ritual is there. Uh, that uh, according to the, uh, the system, what they follow, it may take two days or three days or one day, the puja and everything and they offer uh, all those, uh, whatever uh, described in that their uh, um, Jodisham and uh, the system. So they do everything and separate from the farm, that uh, previous family. And then, uh, then, the, uh, then she goes to the husband's family, then Kuladevada and all puja is, done there only because now the husband and wife is one and since uh, she is living with the husband's family she follows the kuladevada there and when son is born or daughter is born she will also follow the same kuladevada of husband so this is the system and uh, with that, there is a, if you want to know detail of that. So if uh, every year they have to pay something, where they have to uh, do some rituals to the uh, family deity also. Uh, the uh, wife and all family goes to the uh, wife house and uh, no, there's some like we do with Savam, uh, the old Savam and all those. So they have some duties to follow. Uh, if it is not followed also, there is no problem. If before marriage, all the rituals are completed, then there is no matter of uh, doing that again. If they feel like doing, it is also possible. So this is how it is uh, done. And uh, next question is, uh, which are the five ayatanas? We say panchayatana in Shankaracharya's tradition. That is uh, Shiva, Vishnu, Devi, Ganesha, and Surya. That is one 
instead of surya there is another option is kartikeya so vishnu as shiva devi ganesha kartikeya or vishnu shiva devi ganesha surya so these are called panchayatana so each ayatana each deity as uh, if you you are a uh, uh, no you you are ishta devata is uh, vishnu because you are a devotee of vishnu then the vishnu statue or photo is installed on the middle and other four on four sides four directions similarly if i am a uh, devotee of shiva so the shiva will be on middle and other four on four direction this is the uh, this is how they do the puja if you go to our uh, shankara mathas you can see this the, all the shankara matha they do this panchayatna puja in our uh, tradition it is there okay next question next question is by sai Uh, namaste swami ji hari om ah. uh, swami ji a question related to adi shankara so during adi shankara's timeline we hear about a king called sudhanva in kerala hmm. and it uh, appears that once he uh, adi shankara got all this four matha he hmm. made the sudhanva as the emperor of india ah so now the question is is there any calendar in kerala where we it is mentioned any calendar dating where it is like just like we have kolla varsham is there hmm. something about sudhanva varsham or because we have uh, shalivahana shakhe we hmm. have vikram samvat so hmm. appears that such a thing about shali uh, sudhanva there is no mention i haven't heard anything like that yes i i also i have never heard about uh, the separate calendar uh, in the name of sudhanva uh, but uh, i will keep this in my mind uh, i will uh, search for that if something is there and uh, this is uh, according to the story sudhanva was helping shankaracharya ji to uh defeat all opponents or uh, no he is actually the sudhanva the king sudhanva was protecting him uh from no the social attacks and all those in those days because uh he used to travel a lot shankaracharya ji so uh therefore uh, he made him as uh, chakravarti of the emperor of Uh, bhardavarsha uh, that is the story says and he i uh, helped him to establish uh, the mathas so therefore uh, uh, in mathas especially in dwarka matha because that is the oldest one so there uh, they may have some record or some uh, something some proof for uh, his uh, establishment that uh, uh, that is a my uh, no one part of my research also so i will uh, uh, inquire about that and when i get some something uh, some some information i will pass through huh? the next person sundareshan please ask your question yeah please hari om namaste swami ji namo narayana hari om Namo Narayan. Swami Ji explained that the cloth and nool, uh, oh, ah, thread and panni, ah, cloth and thread and cotton, yeah, cotton. The uh, same one sloga in Advaita Deepika is ah. there. Second by ah. Narayana Guru, Vasasu Tandu Idu Panni Idu Adi Moola. प्रगाधम 
ബോധത്തിൽ നിന്നു വിലസുന്നു മരുസ്ഥലത്തു പദത്തുപോലെ പരമാവധി ബോധം അത്രേ അതുകൊണ്ട് ദറ്റ് ഇസ് ഓൺലി ദ പരമാവധി ബോധം ഐ വോണ്ട് എക്സ്പ്രസ് ദറ്റ്സ് ഓൺലി എനി ഔ ഇറ്റ് ഇസ് ഡൗട്ട് ബിക്കോസ് ദിസ് നോ ദിസ് എക്സാമ്പിൾസ് ആൻഡ് these are these are very uh, frequently used in vedanta and all uh, all whenever we see the vedanta text books everywhere it is frequently used so this very famous uh, examples and you know the clay and uh, pot and this uh, you know uh, examples of uh, vastram and uh, like that so therefore uh, when we learn vedanta or uh, any other philosophies they use this uh, uh, examples so this is very famous and that uh, same thing uh, narayan guru he also uh, took and uh, it uh, because it is very famous like uh, when we talk about uh, uh, sanskrita vyakaranam we always caught uh, panini and uh, uh, the acharyas padanjali and like that so same thing it, uh, it has come there any other questions we have rajini wanted to ask a question connected with her last question yeah hari om swami ji uh, kamla ji i just was able to unmute i was not able to unmute before uh, okay. this is rajini here ha ah, rajini okay uh, please uh, yeah it was just that question that you were talking about the reflected consciousness um, my just a connection hmm. question was this is it is this reflected consciousness same as uh, Shetragnya as mentioned in chapter 13 of Bhagavad Gita because there we have the Shetra Shetragnya Vibhaga Yoga. Yeah, this reflected consciousness is called otherwise Jivatma, Chidabhasa and Shetragnya also. Okay, so uh, uh, when we say, it's just a curiosity question, uh, if, if we are going to learn about it later, then you can uh, do it then. Yeah. um because we say that atma does not move does not go anywhere it is eternal and it is uh, sthir but mm. uh, uh, in in very colloquial language when we say oh the person is dead we say the atma has left the body so mm. how can atma leave if it doesn't move it doesn't go anywhere then what is leaving yeah this leaving uh, entity is this reflected consciousness which is identified with the uh, stula uh, sushma sharira subtle body okay so, so it is subtle body this even... identification of subtle body uh, is uh, leaving the body how, that is how we uh, no uh, experience in our dream the same thing the uh, that there is a reflected consciousness just now i uh, mentioned that uh, uh, no in explanation of that that uh, a reflected consciousness is there and with identified with intellect uh, ego and the mind mm. the mental activities mm. so this is one entity that what feel and now going and coming mm. it is very interesting although we say it is going and coming and taking birth and all those but it is like uh, the sunlight if you uh, Uh, just take uh, the mirror one place to another place mm. can we say the reflection of light is moving if we can say that is same way or other example uh, like the space space inside a pot mm. so we have a bottle or a uh, no a vessel we are moving the vessel one place to another place uh, the vessel is moving so we say the space is also moving the space inside the vessel is moving mm. but actually there is mo- no movement of space that we know because space has no parts mm. therefore it cannot move mm. and there is no uh, space without space so everywhere the space is all pervading uh similarly uh, although atma is all pervading like the light or space the moment what we call 
is because of uh, the the vessel because of this uh, uh, mind uh, and uh, other elements the form of that so even that that is happening we cannot say it is not happening it is happening like when we move the mirror the light is also moving so we see that we experience that so uh, in reality it may not be moving because light is everywhere there is no need to move mm. but practically what we experience is moving like uh, we say uh, sun rises in the east actually sun is not rising mm. sun is still in one you know place mm. but uh, we our experience is sun is rising and uh, then it is moving uh, east to west so everything like that so this is uh, what is what we call as perception and here it is cognition what we experience so what is perceived is reality for us because we are talking about that only mm. not what is the reality mm. so reality for us is the perception our own experience mm. so shastra also scriptures also takes that because if we don't uh, no shastra does not take the experience what we are having then we cannot connect ourselves with the shastras mm. because shastra is talking about us and not considering any of our experience so how can we connect with shastras mm. therefore shastra takes our conviction our experiences our uh, uh, perceptions the normal ideas what we have in our life that's all okay thank you very much swami ji thank so, you hadio so we will conclude the session swami ji okay very good so if any questions are left you can just put it in the group right right om purnamad पूर्णमुदस्ते पूर्ण से पूर्णमादा पूर्णमेवशिष्य ओ शाति 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 हरि ओ श्री गुरभ्यो नम हरि ओ